Since we can't work well with elliptic curves over the real numbers, we have to use finite fields. So in cryptography, we only use elliptic curves over some sort of finite field. Um, so let's look at it. Um, an elliptic curve over a finite field has the same equation and the same constraints as before. The only difference is that the curve parameters a and b and the coordinates of the curve points lay in the finite field. But we still have this weird point at infinity. So if we look for example at a prime field fp, um, the curve equation would look like this. It's the same equation, just that the right-hand side is equivalent to the left-hand side, mod p. So an example curve could be this equation here, modulo 2503. This is a toy example, because the modulus is of course too small for use in cryptography. And this is how the curve looks. Maybe it's not as pretty anymore, but those are all the points that fulfill the curve equation modulo 2503 and they form a group under point addition. So what might be a bit confusing in the beginning is that we don't really see an x-axis here. Well we do because you can see that here in the middle it's mirrored and the points are actually mirrored on this imaginary x-axis here. That is because, well, you can think of this as the a point and this as a minus a because this y value here, a, is the same as this y value minus a, which would be the modulus minus a. So actually all the formulas, the formulas we have seen, all the, the equations, all the, all the cases we have to calculate in point addition laws, that's all the same in the finite field. The only difference is that we're now calculating with elements of the finite field so in all calculations we have to work modulo p.